Australia's tropical cyclone season is about to get going in style towards the north of Darwin, but how bad is this system going to be for the Northern Territory? All of your questions answered in this weather update. Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz. We've got a developing tropical cyclone threat across northern Australia. This is going to be a bulk update on what we can be expecting with this tropical cyclone that is near Darwin. And if you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning with the situation over in the Northern Territory. So this is Tropical Low Zero 2 U and it is developing along very, very nicely this morning. Obviously, that's not encouragement for this tropical cyclone, but it is moving along and it is really starting to get itself going here and could potentially be our first tropical cyclone of the 2024. 526 Australian tropical cyclone season and also our first potential significant tropical cyclone threat to the Australian mainland uh, many months before these storms typically do start to become a threat. Now if this does develop it's going to pick up the name of FINA, F-I-N-A, so listen out for that one across the Northern Territory. However that's not expected to happen until the end of this week and the reason for that is that this system still has a ways to go in regards to organising. It looks very very impressive right now though, in fact it, on the satellite imagery you'd be mistaken if you woke up and thought that this was a tropical cyclone just by looking at at the satellite imagery, and we've got this defined center of low pressure here, some inflow banding coming off here, and some outflow banding coming out to the backside of this storm here. It's a very, very organized system as it moves slowly up to the north in towards the north northeast. Now, it is going to continue to, to develop over the next couple of days. In fact, we're expecting some pretty steady strengthening in the next 24 hours, 36 hours or so. And the forecast models are now taking this by the Northern Territory coastline down in towards the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, generally speaking. And a potential cyclone impact on Darwin is definitely not out the question at this point in time. Now, as we talked about in yesterday's forecast model, how these models initialize the storm, which is how they analyze the storm to be right now, is how well they're going to perform in the forecast. And the Eastern Relief, which has been performing pretty well over the last couple of days, has initialized this system as a broad, messy, low pressure system, which means that it's analyzed the storm. It's taken all of the data that it can get from this tropical low, and it thinks, no, this just isn't it. It's not doing very well, and it's a broad area of low pressure. Now, that's bad for tropical cycling intensity because it means that it's got a lot more in the way of organization to do. But what this means for the Eastern Blair forecast, which has taken it off in this direction here, and then down by Darwin as a very weak cyclone, then into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf by early next week uh, as a very weak tropical cyclone, it means that we can pretty much throw this forecast out the window because it's not as reliable as other forecast models. In actual fact, it's flipped, and the GFS is now the one that we're going to be looking at because it is definitely the most reliable forecast model uh, in terms of the historical standpoint, but it's also got this system here initialized as a center of low pressure, a very defined center of low pressure just offshore from the Tiwi islands here and it's doing a pretty good job at just taking this storm in and all of the data that we've got on this tropical cyclone and making a good forecast out of it. So let's see what the GFS has to say. As mentioned that northerly track as this system continues to strengthen a little bit throughout the next 24 to 36 hours getting north of the northern territory up to about 10 degrees south actually. It gets quite far up actually about 8 degrees south. It really does get quite far up into the Arafura Sea getting quite close to Indonesia before it makes that turn back on Wednesday night or into Thursday morning. It's going to be a very slow moving system all things considered and then cross over the Tiwi Islands sometime on Saturday. Now the GFS does generally underestimate in terms of wind speed, so we can safely say that this is likely to be a tropical cyclone at this point in time as it clips the Tiwi Islands and then heads down into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf where some pretty significant intensification does become possible. The GFS, as mentioned, is a massive low baller in terms of tropical cyclone intensity. Typically it only estimates winds to about 30 or 40 percent of the extent that they are, which means as it passes by the Tiwi Islands here, if we've got wind speeds of about 50 kilometers an hour, it'd be pretty safe to assume that we've got one minute sustained winds in this tropical cyclone here approaching 110 or 120 kilometers an hour and that would make it safely a category one strength tropical cyclone and probably close to a category two strength tropical cyclone. The track forecast is starting to become a little bit more uh, known in regards to what this system is going to be doing over the next couple of days. As mentioned that northeasterly track in the next few days is expected and then by Wednesday or Thursday it's going to stall up here and then slowly make its turn back down to the northern territory. This is where things do get interesting. We've got a pretty big split of forecast models that take it out to the southwest like the GFS or down towards the south like the icon in the east and left forecast model or out towards the east and over the top end of the northern territory in towards Kakadu like the access forecast model which means basically our cone of uncertainty could be anywhere within this red line here which makes predicting a landfall virtually impossible because it could be anywhere from Kalumbaru in the northwestern corner of the uh, Kimberley region of western Australia or it could be Darwin it could be Warawai or it could be over towards Nullanby and Cape Wessel onto the eastern edge 
edge of the Cape, uh, of the not the Cape York Peninsula, rather the Northern Territory top end. So really, really uncertain as to where this tropical cyclone is going to go. And to be honest, it's also quite uncertain as to how strong it's going to get. If it makes it out further west, say into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf through here, it's going to get quite strong, likely Category Two or Three strength tropical cyclone status. Now, if it has interaction with the Tiwi Islands, it's likely to remain a Category One strength cyclone as it clips or passes over Darwin. And if it heads out further here, in fact, we've got some pretty unfavorable conditions, including a lot of dry air and upper level wind shear uh, towards the east of this line here, which means we're likely to see either a tropical low or a very weak tropical cyclone, which is going to be very broad or messy in uh, appearance. So again, we just don't know which option this tropical low is going to take at this point in time. It could be either one of them. I'm banking on either this option here close to Darwin or out towards the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, but truth be told, I really don't know at this point in time, considering there is just so much uncertainty. Now, there's been a lot of uncertainty with this forecast the last couple of days. This storm has been an absolute nightmare to forecast, as tropical cyclones normally are. But the one thing that is guaranteed is because this is a tropical based weather system, tropical cyclone, duh, there's going to be a lot of rainfall associated with it. And all major forecast models are suggesting the next seven to eight days are going to be extremely wet wherever this tropical low or tropical cyclone passes over. And again, it really does depend where this system does go. If it moves over the Tiwi Islands, which is very likely at this point in time, a boatload of rainfall is expected up there. All major forecast models are suggesting between 200 and 400 millimetres of the Tiwi Islands. In fact, a few forecast models are now getting closer to about 500 or 600 millimetres, including the Axis Convective Forecast Model, which is suggesting rainfall accumulations approaching 800 millimetres for a few spots. Now, this is quite a bullish forecast, but we have to keep in mind that we are talking about a tropical-based weather system once again, and a slow-moving tropical cyclone like this one, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibilities that half a metre of rainfall falls. It has happened before in November up into the Northern Territory, but it would result in most certainly some unprecedented flooding for a few locations, and it could definitely get its name into the history books if we were to see rainfall accumulations approaching 800 or 900 millimetres. I definitely reckon we're going to see a much more uh, tame spread of rainfall. I, I do like the GFS's forecast right now, not, in, not only because it favours Darwin being spared from the worst of the rainfall, but we've got these more reasonable rainfall accumulations right now of around 100 millimetres, pushing close to about 300 millimetres where this tropical cyclone does track. Again, very much strongly dependent on where this system does go and who uh, kind of sees the strongest winds and where who kind of sees the landfall from this tropical cyclone. Um, as you might be able to tell, wherever the low pressure center does pass, which for the Eastern Air Forecast model is somewhere along this track here. You can see that the bulk of the rainfall is just around that track, and that includes Darwin as well. It's going to be pretty concentrated rainfall. It's not a massive system, all things considered, and when it approaches the Australian coastline, it's also not going to be a massive system. You can see here from uh, west to east, whilst it is covering quite a lot of ground, the rainfall core in this system here is still pretty defined, and it really is quite, uh, it is still continuing to develop. Obviously, there's still rainfall out of this part of the convection here, which is outside of the radar coverage, but all things considered, it's not a massive tropical cyclone developing, and it is actually expected to get a little bit smaller in the way of area, so rainfall is going to be pretty concentrated, depending on where this system can go. I definitely expect 150 millimetres for Darwin, and this is the part where I give my message as to what you need to do across the Northern Territory in Western Australia, and at this point in time, my message remains, watch but don't panic. It's unnecessary to make pre uh, preparations right now. On the Tiwi Islands, I definitely recommend preparing for some very significant rainfall accumulations. As mentioned, those falls between 400 to 500 millimetres are now possible. It's going to rain on the Tiwi Islands on and off for the remainder of today, and then it's going to rain from Thursday right through to about Sunday. Very typical monsoonal-based pattern up there, but it's going to leave a lot of rainfall for a few uh, for a few spots in the Northern Territory. Just make sure you are tropical cyclone season ready. So make sure you've got your general preparations in place, and that basically means you've got your cyclone emergency kits up to date, and you are ready, generally speaking, for a tropical cyclone to come through on short notice. Trim up the garden, just make sure you've got your emergency plan in action as well. But at this point in time, it is most certainly overkill to begin preparations for a full-blown tropical cyclone. It's likely that we're going to see a tropical cyclone pass over at least some place on the Northern Territory or WA coastline, but we just don't know where yet, and it's until then we really can't, well, we really shouldn't be making full-blown preparations because it could just be all for nothing. Now, the places that are likely to be impacted by this system, likely, not guaranteed, Columbaroo, uh, Wyndham, Kununurra, Darwin, Bathurst on the Tiwi Islands, and then pretty much everywhere through this part of the Northern Territory here. A lot of remote Indigenous 
indigenous communities up here and they get badly impacted by tropical cyclones like this. So make sure you do spread the word in the top end of the Northern Territory. Uh, definitely for the Northern Territory in the top end of, the, of Western Australia and also Queensland by extent, sometimes the only source of news that these people have is just word of mouth and from family. So sharing the information that we're presenting here and sharing official news reports as well is the best way to keep people informed and safe during an event like this. I'm going to watch this system uh, develop very, very closely over the coming couple of days. We'll wait and see what is in store for this tropical cyclone in the future. It's definitely looking like an interesting one, that's for sure. And just keeping things tropical over in the northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula, we have had that low pressure system kind of broaden up and really weaken off into the Ca uh, Gulf of Carpentaria, but it's been spitting out some shower and thunderstorm activity through the Cape York Peninsula. And we actually had a good outbreak of severe thunderstorms last night onto the uh, uh, northern uh, or the uh, eastern edge of the Cape York Peninsula, actually rather, sorry about that, inland from the Daintree Rainforest. In fact, some really good thunderstorms blew through Darrell's place at Mount Carbine. Some really nice stuff out there. Lots and lots of heavy rainfall absolutely poured through parts of the Cape York Peninsula. There's a little bit more rainfall on the way for the uh, northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula. The bulk of this is going to come through around the Lockhart River area in the next three or four days. We may be seeing this easterly flow pick up shower and rainfall activity and a further 100 or 150 millimetres is definitely on the cards. And more shower or thunderstorm activity is also expected, but it's all going to be north of a line from Cooktown inland. So that means that Cairns, the Daintree Rainforest and the Casper Coast are going to pick up the zip. As we push things out forward, you can see towards the end of the month, we will be seeing a bit of an uptick in rainfall across parts of the Cape York Peninsula. We may be seeing some shower and thunderstorm activity, or we could actually be seeing a bit of an easterly flow pipe down from the Solomon Sea, and that could present a couple of days of heavier falls or the chance of heavier rainfall accumulations across the Atherton Tablelands and into the Daintree Rainforest. You can see falls here into the last couple of days of November, approaching 100 millimetres in one or two spots. And between other major forecast models as well, it is pretty congruent, which is good to see. They could definitely do with the rainfall at this time of the year. So very, very excited for that. Bring it on, the bulk of that coming through, as mentioned, at the end of November and into the first couple of days of December. We'll keep an eye on northern Queensland. There's not an awful lot happening over there for the next couple of days. There is going to be some stuff happening throughout southeastern and south central Queensland in the next couple of days, but in particularly over the border in towards New South Wales, we're going to have a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak uh, activity to keep us on our toes. I don't think it's going to be anything too crazy, but we will still see a couple of storms that are going to pipe up from, I believe, tomorrow afternoon and evening in a very small capacity through parts of uh, the northeast of uh, New South Wales, but it is going to be in a very small capacity, probably one or two thunderstorms up there. And then as we get out towards Thursday, we will see a couple more thunderstorms developing through parts of the central coast, right down to the Illawarra coastline. Inland from Sydney, we may see one or two strong thunderstorms as well out around the Richmond area and then south towards Penrith. And one or two strong thunderstorms will also be possible around the mid-north coast and then up into the northern rivers and the northern tablelands. Again, I don't expect anything too crazy to develop on Thursday afternoon or evening. One or two good thunderstorms is also possible out around the Roma area as well in towards central Queensland. Uh, again, I don't expect anything too crazy out here. Severe thunderstorms are a possibility, but they're not overly uh, widespread or concerning at this point in time. As we push things forward towards Friday, we will see some stronger thunderstorms chances through the northeast of New South Wales and potentially a severe thunderstorm outbreak through southeastern Queensland as well. Some good severe thunderstorms are also expected inland from Tamworth around the Dubber and the Orange area. Some moisture streams in from the southeast here into the Tasman Sea and some great thunderstorms are possible in towards the northern parts and the northeastern parts of New South Wales. So inland from Grafton, Coffs Harbour, Yamba and Lismore. In terms of the risk for southeast Queensland, it's a little bit too early to tell at this point in time, but it looks mainly scenic rim, granite belt and darling downs. I don't really expect anything too crazy to pop off into the Brisbane area, but we do have some good convective available potential energy values and some warm maximum temperatures expected with winds out of the east as well, bringing that moisture in and that trough a little bit further inland, bringing that moisture down from the north as well. So we may see some solid thunderstorm activity in this area here, but for Brisbane, I think you guys are going to miss out once again. It really can, uh, depends on how warm it gets into parts of the scenic realm. I know we're expecting a 30 degree day, but it needs to get a little bit warmer and probably a little bit moisture for thunderstorm, moisture for thunderstorm activity to properly develop into the scenic realm and through southeast Queensland on Friday. I believe there's a better chance on Saturday a little bit further inland. We may see a couple of stronger thunderstorms around the Roma and the Chinchilla area. Definitely some strong thunderstorm activity is expected into the northeast of New South Wales on Saturday and a good severe thunderstorm outbreak is likely on the cards, particularly around the Tamworth area. Uh, the convective sounding does look quite healthy minus a little bit of dry air. We're expecting a bit of a low pressure system to get itself set up on a Saturday just offshore from New South Wales as well and that will help things get going. Sunday, thunderstorm chances increase again for Queensland 
find some good severe thunderstorm activity as possible around the Roma, the Chalavil, and inland towards Thargaminda area. And that's when we're going to see a surge in convective available potential energy values build. And you can see on Monday, big time severe convective available potential energy values are expected through southeast Queensland. And this is going to be rocket fuel for severe thunderstorms. You can see Monday bringing a solid severe thunderstorm outbreak across parts of the Downs and the Granite Belt area, and potentially some solid severe thunderstorm activity a little bit further inland as well towards the west of Kingaroy, out towards Chinchilla, Taruma, and Eidsvold. It's still a little bit too early to tell exactly what we're going to be expecting into the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area. The atmosphere and the environment looks really good, bar a little bit of moisture. And we do have that good wind shear as well into the upper levels of the atmosphere. All in all, this is good, but not great for severe thunderstorms. Further inland, it becomes that kind of great level where we're going to be seeing that moisture spread right through the atmosphere, which is going to be a lot more conducive for severe thunderstorm development. It's a little bit of an interesting one, and major forecast models still need to catch up on what we're expecting. You can see there are still some pretty big discrepancies between the GFS and the Eastern Limit, which, which is what we've just been looking at. But for now, it remains an interesting aspect of our forecast. A few thunderstorms also expected down in towards southwestern WA. We had a good light show last night into parts of the northern wheat belt, and today is expected to present the risk of some cracker thunderstorms inland from Geraldton out to about Mount Magnet. You can see a couple of them already beginning to get themselves going right now in a pretty significant way between Mullawa out towards Yalgu. Severe thunderstorm chances are most certainly elevated today and tomorrow through parts of central western Australia, and that could bring some rainfall as well as far south as Perth. In fact, we may see a, dr a drop or two of solid rainfall accumulations from developing thunderstorms, which may get going later tonight as far south as two rocks just towards the north of Perth, uh, fondly known in the Perth metro area as South Geraldton. Uh, severe thunderstorms are going to be possible once again into parts of the central weed belt. If you haven't got your crop out of the ground used today to do so because the hail risk is most certainly going to be there and into parts of the weed belt. It's going to be a very, very widespread risk as well around the Meriden area, along Great Eastern Highway and just towards the north. And some solid thunderstorms are also expected towards the south of Meriden and southern cross down to Lake Grace and Hyden. And some solid thunderstorm activity will also develop along the central west coast as well between Perth up to about Calbarry interesting stuff and with that a lot of warm air is going to build in towards the southwest as well but on that note that's going to do it for today's weather forecast update i've delayed my la nina update i'm going to give that out on about thursday or friday this week depending on when the severe thunderstorm coverage begins to build across southeast queensland and northeastern new south wales if you've got any questions or comments as well about the tropical cyclone let me know in the comment section down below and i'll help you out to the best of my ability and check me out on facebook as well i'll be updating you on the tropical cyclone and also the severe thunderstorm threat daily in fact probably getting close towards hourly or every Every three hours or so over there as well but that's going to do it for me today a special shout out to our extremely long list of channel sponsors i love looking at this list every single day it brings a smile to my dial when i add it to the end of my video update so thank you very very much to all of the channel sponsors and all of those that have gifted channel memberships as well on the screen right now that's gonna be all for me today and i'll catch you on the next storm goodbye